the Nigeria Central Bank Governor uh, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi says he is satisfied with the results of the regulatory changes in the country's banking sector. Now, CNBC Africa's Umu Ibrahim caught up with the governor post the MPC announcement and they discussed the recent arrest of some Nigerian bank managers as well as plans for the country's banking sector in 2014. I have been informed by the CEO of Fidelity. Um, I'm aware that several of his staff were arrested by the SSS. Uh, I'm aware that in some cases, apparently some homes were visited by people with guns, tearing up mattresses and children's school bags. Uh, it's not a helpful thing for the reputation of the SSS. It's not a helpful thing for the EFCC and the police who are supposed to be investigating fraud or money laundering cases. It's not a helpful thing for the banking industry. Um, if bankers um, are subjected to this treatment. Um, I don't want to say very much. I have not spoken to the SSS myself, but I have um, called the National Security Advisor. Um, I have expressed uh, my concerns about this. This is really, if it is an investigation of a politically exposed person for fraud, it's really an EFCC police matter, not a state security matter. Um, the NSA has promised me he will look into it. Um, uh, hopefully uh, this week when I see the president, um, if I do have an opportunity in the, in the UK, I will um, also um, uh, bring this to the attention of the president. But I don't have enough information uh, to, to make too many comments um, on it other than to say that overall I don't think it is it is a helpful direction um, in which to go and, and the signals are not good. Now it's almost the end of the year, this is our last MPC and a lot, quite a lot of things has happened over the period of one year. Are you satisfied with the results of the regulatory changes you've made in the banking sector? Specifically the 50% cash reserve requirement for banks, public sector deposits and the retail Dutch action system, the CBN reintroduced to Forex market to stabilize the Naira. I think it's a mixed story, but largely good. And if you look at the, um, and I keep saying that if we, if you talk about the CRR, you should always ask the counterfactual. If we had not done it, what would have happened? Um, there's no guarantee, but if you look at what happened to the Indian currency and the Indonesian currency and the Ghanaian currency and the South African currency, um, the question is to ask yourself if the Naira had lost 10% or 15% or 20%, uh, where would the um, shareholders be, where would the exchange rate be, where would the reserves be, um, and where would the financial system be. So um, we foresaw pressure, uh, we, we acted, we have I think as MPC prided ourselves in our ability to take very quick and what may seem to be drastic measures in anticipation of problems before they actually occur. Um, and. It's easy to take this for granted, but, but to, have, to have lost just 2% and recovered most of it at this time, uh, when you look at what, all hap what happened to other emerging and frontier currencies, is remarkable. Uh, the only currency that I know escaped really is Kenya. I still don't know how they did it, but um, uh, most other um, emerging and frontier currencies um, did not. So to that extent, um, it is good. Uh, on the Ardas, uh, we have had the stability in the interbank market, which we wanted. Um, interbank is right back uh, within the band. Now, obviously, um, other measures that included reducing the amount of cash to BDCs uh, means that um, we've now we now have some distortions of supply and demand in that segment of the market, which is about 10% of the total market, and and therefore you've got this. Um, divergence is still within the range of 5%, which is fine. Um, but we would like to see um, that uh, um, gap narrow uh, to reduce the opportunities for arbitrage. Uh, but we should avoid knee-jerk reactions because fundamentally uh, what we did was right. Uh, we do not need to be having so much dollar cash sold and moving around. So if you reduce supply of cash dollars and people still want to go and buy uh, dollars, they're going to have um, issues.
Come 2014, will the MPC adopt a more aggressive stance on the back of expansionary you know, fiscal spending and plans by the government to spend more money on recurrent and less on capital projects that will help boost the economy and create jobs? We'll wait and see how the um, monetary conditions play out. Uh, we have said very clearly that uh, if we need to respond, we will respond. Uh, so far, we have not seen, I mean, the medium-term expenditure framework and the government's budget at $74 a barrel, um, the House of Reps, $79, um, Senate, $76. The benchmark price being used is not in any case higher than what was used in 2013. Uh, the spending in 2013 has been fairly moderate. The growth in spending has not been higher than say the rate of inflation so in real terms um, the second half of, of, of 2013 has seen um, greater fiscal discipline than the earlier parts of the year and we're pleased with that. Now, the, the real problem uh, on the fiscal side to my mind is, is the continued, continued disappointment of all revenues uh, and revenues continue to slide down at a much higher rate than oil price or, or output and it's about checking where those leakages are. Um, and therefore reducing government debt, government deficit, government borrowing. Um, if we have a combination of an increase in revenue and a slight increase in spending, uh, uh, that basically means the deficit um, is not widening, we're having some form of fiscal consolidation, we're not going to have any issues on the monetary side. Now, there was a recent call by the Nigerian lawmakers who do not see why Nigeria should have robust forex reserves which covers 11 months of imports and instead of the internationally recognized three months of import. Now, what's your take on this argument? And if pursued, what does the CBN plans to do about it? Well, I don't know what they call robust reserves. If um, you've got about 18 to 20 billion dollars of uh, portfolio money that can go out any day, you better discount those reserves by 20 billion. So um, effectively, what you might call your hardcore reserves um, are 20, 25 billion, some sa savings from the central bank. Uh, and um, the Federation. The entire amount in the Federation account is less than $5 billion. And then you have federal government reserves about 3.3. So you're looking at $8 billion, really, as savings by the government, $8 billion in an oil-producing country. I'm not sure that is what you'd call robust. Um, all we've done is um, by keeping this environment attractive to investors, we've attracted the money. And because we've attracted the money, um, those dollars have been have financed a lot of the import requirements of the economy and therefore we've been able to save this money but you know in the event of an external shock or if investors said they want their money uh, we have to use these reserves to pay them back um, unless we want the narrative to go um, right um, uh, to, uh, through the, through the floor